Welcome back to the channel. Today I've got the uh, my updated list of the Tapu Lele Garbodor deck, and I haven't changed a whole lot of stuff from this uh, from my original list, but I did change out a couple cards. The big things that I took out was I took out a Drampa. Uh, I felt like this card you had to commit solely to that strategy in order to play multiple copies of it. Mainly just like playing rainbows, magma bases, that kind of thing. So. I felt like playing it at one was a fine way to just kind of use it as a niche tech to like Ninja Boy into or to to discard special energy if you need to. Kind of gives you some options there. Um, everything else in the Pokemon line is the same. The other changes I made a, a plus one Hex Maniac and I felt like with the emergence of stuff like Greninja, Volcanion, Decidueye, all these ability based decks I felt like a second Hex was worth it. Um, it's one of those things where you could consider a 2-2 split of this, but I felt like the second Hex is better overall. It gives you another attacker that you can just Hex spam, especially with the fact that you play a 3 Tapu Lele and you can search it out if you need it, and then VS Seeker to get it back from the discard. Overall, makes it worth it, honestly, to play the 2 Hex. I switched out the three Sycamore, or the 4 Sycamore for the 4th Ed, and I felt like with this switch, it may hurt the deck's consistency a little bit but it was one of those things it's kind of like a mirror match thing because you don't want to sick a more all the way all your items to help to like give you the, the ability to one shot your gx Pokemon. so i felt like it was a good idea to basically cut down the sick work count especially since you can lele for it or if you can vs secret if you need it and then just basically play for ed and making that your supporter of choice probably 50 to 60 percent of the time um i also place olympia instead of playing a eighth energy olympia is one of those cards where i like the card a lot um it's something that kind of fits my play style especially since you can lele for it you can get it back with vs seeker and it gives you another way to retreat other than flintstone so like if they Lysander out something with a choice band and you can't retreat it right away, you can just Olympiad out of it. Uh, Tauros is pretty fat. He could get stuck up there. Uh, Drampa is relatively fat too. He could probably get stuck up there also. So I think that overall, something like this is a good idea. Like Olympia, Floatstone, or not Floatstone, uh, Escape Rope, Switch. Something that other than Floatstone, you could just retreat out of it, get out of your, get out of the ability or get out of lock. And then everything else is the same. The, I don't play 8 energy anymore. I only play 7 uh, and off of the Olympia. Kind of gives you like a switch card instead, which I felt like that was kind of worth it, especially since you play Super Odd. Um, I'm considering possibly taking out a Rescue Stretcher. I don't know for what yet, though. Uh, it could be like for maybe like a Flare Grunt or like a Center Lady or third Lysander or an 8th eighth energy again or something like that. I don't know yet, but um, I'm going to test this deck a little bit more and I may bring it to a cup or two just to see uh, how it does. But this is my updated version of the deck after testing it. Uh, I will be testing it more, kind of give you guys a little bit of an update on where I'm at with this list as I test it more and more. But the other deck I want to update in this video was the Quad Sylveon deck that I played on stream. And this one I changed relatively a good amount of cards on, actually. I changed about seven cards on this. I took out a top, the two top of Lele, I took out four Ultra Ball, and I took out an Escape Rope. And what I put in, as I put in a four Sylveon, um, I felt like the four four may give you some options in terms of getting back your Sylveon, like getting it out under Hex Lock. Uh, it might give you an option just to be able to get it out when you need to. I've seen some lists play like Vaporeon, Jolteon, and that kind of stuff and I like the idea of that because you could search for it you could just evolve one of your EVs that you searched out for into it uh, especially against stuff like uh, Mega Ray Quasi you just one shot with Lightning or Yutal you can one shot with Lightning uh, Vaporeon you can one shot Volcanians like it gives you options which I think could be really strong but I think ultimately I wouldn't want to do that until there's a d definite answer on which one to play like, let's say, for example, like there's a ton of Lightning Weakness stuff that you know to play Jolteon. Um, I would want to try to play multiples of these. Uh, I think it only, it's only valuable to play one of it. And whatever it is, it has to be the right one. It has to be the right call for the metagame. So like, let's say if there's a ton of Volcanion, play the Vaporeon. 
Uh, if there's a lot of like hematol or mega ray, play the lightning, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, but I took out a rope for that. I put in another deliquit because I felt like deliquit is really strong in this deck because when they aren't doing anything or they're trying to hold out of resources, you can just deliquit it out of their hand. Which Flare is kind of the same thing, but the one thing I like about the liquid is it's three any cards. So yeah, sometimes it could just discard their random junk, but also sometimes it could also just discard their whole hand and not even worry about it, or discard the most important pieces of their hand. Um, I mean, they're not gonna discard important pieces of their hand normally, but it forces them to decide what's important and what's not. And ultimately, they could make the wrong decision in that. So it's not saying that you're relying on it, but it's one of those things where it's an added bonus to the card. Uh, now, I play two very techie supporters in this list right now, uh, Kakui and Center Lady. And I think the main reason why is because there's two reasons why. Center, for, at least for Center Lady. Center Lady, it gives you the ability to disrupt damage, which Max Potion does too. But this also gives you the it gives you the ability to do chip damage. So like Tauros or like any like uh, Greninja hitting for one ten, stupid stuff like that. You can just center lady it and not even worry about it, not even go for the one shot. But um, it's one of those cards where it could be useful, but it might not be useful enough for it to award the spot. It also gives you another choice on supporters, which ultimately, uh, I don't know if it's worth it, uh, but it's something that I'm testing. Kukui is something that I'm also testing, and the big reason for Kukui is obviously because of Greninja, and because of Volcanion, and because of Garbodor. Those main three reasons um, are why I would play Kukui in this, and I think against all three of those decks, you have to go semi-aggressive, except for maybe Garbodor, uh, depending on how they play it or how you play it. Uh, but vo vo especially Greninja, you have to go on the offensive against Greninja, otherwise you'll probably lose. Uh, Volcanion's probably the same way. Uh, if you don't go on the offensive, you'll probably lose. Um, so and being able to shoot one shot, all that stuff is very important. So, and then the rest of this is the same: four Flare Guy, a Handiwork, a Gora, three DCE, and eight Fairy. Um, I've seen Let's Play 2-2 of like Handiwork and Grunt. Uh, I like the idea of the second Grunt. I just don't know how I'd fit it. As of yet, I, there's a lot of things I could take out for it. There's a lot of different options. But I want to see how it tests out first to see if I even need the second Grunt. And if I do decide I need the second Grunt, what I, what I take out for it. Um, so this is kind of where I'm at for this list. I'll be testing this more again, trying to prepare it for maybe for a cup or two. Maybe I'll see what that does. I'll be posting tournament reports if I, whenever I do go to cups, uh, so that way you'll know what I played, how I did, that kind of thing. Uh, but thank you guys for watching this video so far. If you guys have gotten this far, I really do appreciate it. Uh, I I hope it gave you some kind of insight on one of these two decks, and I hope that it gives you something, it's something that you can help try out or test or something like that. So uh, if you like this content, if you like this videos, these videos, uh, definitely subscribe to me on YouTube, uh, twitch.tv at Chubby Chalupa TCG. I'm streaming uh, semi-regularly. I'll be getting a more set schedule here soon. Uh, Crabbernathy914 at uh, twi Twitter is where I post up all kinds of updates for videos or Twitch streams or anything like that. And then I do have a Facebook page at Chubby Chalupa TCG. Uh, I'm just kind of starting that up, just kind of a wait so that way I can broadcast what I'm streaming and that kind of thing. Uh, but thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, I hope you got something out of it. Um, and hopefully, uh, hopefully the testing will be good for you on either one of these two decks. Uh, it certainly has been for me. So hopefully it, it, you enjoy it as well. And thank you so much for watching.